Hey everyone, this is Ms. Moriarty. I'm here to discuss with us topics 3.8 and 3.9, the last two topics of Unit 3. Now here in 3.8, we'll be talking a little bit about um, some human population dynamics. Um, so here, starting off, uh, we've talked now a lot about total fertility rate and age structure diagrams, and we know that the larger the total fertility rate of a country, usually that relates to more population growth. The lower and lower the TFR becomes, the lower the population growth may be, and in some cases, some countries may even be declining. Now, why is it important to understand how the human population grows? Well, we need to ensure that we have enough resources for everyone, right? Especially in, in the future. So one of the first individuals to kind of propose this whole idea, you know, does Earth have a carrying capacity for humans? That was an economist by the name of Thomas Malthus. So that's where the Malthusian theory kind of comes into play here. But he proposed that um, Earth's carrying capacity for humans is really based upon food production. So he noticed that food kind of increases arithmetically. So you can see that on the line there. But human population, that's going to increase right geometrically. So we're going to increase right exponentially. So we're going to pretty much outgrow uh, the food that is required for us to survive. So he thought human population growth was going to be growing much faster than what our food production growth might be. So he thought humans will eventually reach a carrying capacity and that will be limited by the food supply that we have. Now we can see that since the time of Thomas Malthus, Right, we've been able to increase Earth's carrying capacity, increase the amount of food production we've been able to have according to our human population due to a lot of technological advancements. So really any innovation, any change to how we can make our food production better is only going to increase our carrying capacity. Now an example of that would be the use of synthetic fixation, so being able to um, harness synthetic nitrogen, be able to add it to fertilizers, add it to agricultural fields. What that's going to do is target crops to grow much better, right? We know that they require things like nitrogen and phosphorus, so it's only going to lead to greater crop yields with synthetic fertilizers. We could also see irrigation, right? Moving water to our crop fields to get better water supply, a better water availability increases the amount of food production we can have as well. So when thinking about this carrying capacity, it's important to note the factors that are going to increase as well as decrease the human population over time. We know factors that increase population growth is the higher total fertility rate. High infant mortality rate usually drives up the TFR and the rep replacement level fertility. Immigration can also influence uh, the population growth rate of countries, like in the United States, for example. Um, we see that our growth rate is, is slowing down, but because of immigration rates, that can still remain quite high, even if the TFR is going to be falling. Factors that decrease population growth rate would be high death rates uh, and an increase in development over time. So the opportunity for women to partake in more education or just have greater affluence, right? Being able to sell goods, make money and trade. Um, delaying the age of the first child that women tend to have or even postponement of marriage age all play a role in how many children a family is going to have, which once again plays a role in how the population will grow over time. So take a moment, folks, uh, and answer the practice FRQ journal in your notes and then on the Ed Puzzle, please. All right, for our practice FRQ 3.8, you had to describe two ways human activity could raise a habitat's carrying capacity for humans specifically. Some answers that would be accepted here could be the use of irrigation techniques in order to increase water availability to our crops. The use of fertilizers to maybe overcome the lack of nutrients or minerals in a soil to increase crop yields. Could also say the use of pesticides in order to kill any harmful pests that might eat our crops. Okay. 
Now, moving on, guys, to 3.9. This is the last piece. This is now a demographic transition. So this kind of encompasses really everything that we've now talked about in terms of human population. So what is going to happen to the human population over time? If you think back to the little GIF I showed in class when we talked about total fertility rate, we could see over time the TFR globally is going to eventually decline. And that is driven by industrialization. So the more and more countries around the world become developed, more industrialized, we're going to see the TFR fall amongst each of those countries. Now, we can map out which stage this country may be in based on a couple of different factors. In the stage one of their industrialized process, they're going to be less developed. So this means a type of country that falls into this category relies heavily on subsistence farming, meaning that they're growing crops on their own land for their own survival. Usually these countries have very little money per capita and very little money just overall. So they have a low GDP or gross domestic product. And typically they have lack of access to healthcare. So they're gonna have very high death rates, high infant mortality rates, high birth rates. Now, once a pre-industrialized country maybe begins to transition into a more modern like country maybe um, they begin to have a greater crop yield be able to trade uh, and make more money this is where they can start to become developed so now at this point those countries are developing so as a result we tend to see a decrease in death rate maybe a decrease in infant mortality rate a rise in their gdp until that country becomes officially industrialized or developed. So it's now completed the transition. And here we can see a much lower death rate, a much lower infant mortality rate, a very high GDP, a lower TFR, right? Because now people are not going to have as many children. They don't require the free labor, labor from their children. So all of these stages are actually mapped out in four different phases known as the demographic transition. So looking at the first phase, that's the pre-industrialized, the very less developed country. So as I mentioned before, they have very high infant mortality rate, high death rate, lack of access to clean water, health care, and so on. They have very high TFRs because in a country such as this, they would lack access of education for women and contraceptives. They require uh, lots and lots of children simply for free labor. They have little to no growth amongst their population um, due to the fact that uh, CBR and CDR, birth rate, crude death rate, are kind of balancing each other out. So their population size is quite small. And virtually at this point, no country around the globe is even in phase one anymore. But remember, right way back when right all countries have gone through these stages so as of this point in time no countries in phase one right now but now looking to phase two if you look at the graph here we start to see birth rates and death rates are going to separate from one another death rate declines really rapidly while birth rate remains very high so this is because now modernizations in these countries have now brought clean water, better health care, stable food supply. So death rates are going to rapidly decline here as, long, as well as infant mortality rates. However, due to a little bit of a, a generational lag at this point, these individuals um, don't really know that the death rate is declining here. So people are still having lots and lots of children, right? So TFR remains very high still. And there still is somewhat of a need for children um, for agricultural purposes. But remember, right, there's a generational lag here, right? So society hasn't yet changed at this point. So that's why birth rate uh, is, is still quite high and death rate is declining. So in the phase two, you can kind of see in their population size, they are actually growing at a very rapid rate 
due to the separation of birth and death rate. So some things going on societally. They still have a low per capita gross domestic product, although they are becoming more modernized. They still have a shorter life expectancy than phase three and phase four. And their infant mortality rate is still going to be a bit higher than phase three and phase four, but remember it is declining. And they will still have a high TFR. As well as low literacy rates or school life expectancy for girls in this country. Moving on to phase three, this is now unindustrialized country. They have stable population growth at this point. You can start to see birth rate and death rate are now somewhat equaling one another. Um, these families now have greater income. TFR is now going to start to decline. Now this country maybe provides more educational opportunities for their women. Maybe there's a delay in age of the first marriage or first child. There's better access to family planning. So CBR is gonna now drop and get a little bit closer to the CDR. So now their growth rate is going to slow at this point. So this time these individuals have a much higher per capita or per person wealth as well as a longer life expectancy than phase one or two, a lower infant mortality rate. And here is where TFR is now slowly approaching that replacement level fertility, which is why we can say they have much more stable population growth. And here they're providing more access to education for women, so we see a higher literacy rate and school life expectancy. Then lastly, we get two countries that are now in phase four. So this is the post-industrialized country. This is where they are very modernized, very affluent. Um, here is where we see the TFR decline now even further. Um, and in some cases, uh, we can actually see a, a stage five of demographic transition where the population is going to decline. Birth rate will go below uh, the death rate. But here, families are wealthy. They spend more time on education and career pursuits, so they delay the age of marriage. They can delay the age of having a first child. They have better access to family planning. Um, so here's where we can begin to see that decline in population. So now very high per capita gross domestic product, the longest life expectancy out of each of our phases. Here they can fall below the replacement level fertility of 2.1, and they have the highest contraceptive use rates. So now folks, the last FRQ here, using this graph above, identify which stage of the demographic transition undergoes the greatest population growth rate and explain why. So take a moment and jot this down in your practice FRQ journal and in the Edpuzzle. All right, so taking a look at our demographic transition, remember we mentioned stage two, the transitional stage, the industrializing stage will have the greatest population growth rate. This is because, remember that CDR, that crude death rate is falling very rapidly, but crude birth rate still remains very high. So at this point, there are more and more people still having children but less and less of them are dying. So now we are just only adding to the population at an exponential rate. All right, everyone, that's it for unit three. Um, please, if you have any questions, leave it at the end of the video.